News Talk 760 WJR. Online, the great voice of the Great Lakes, when you want it. The Frank Beckman Show. Last week was a, was a horrible week for a lot of auto dealers across the country, especially here in Metro Detroit, where we're hurting so much for the home of the auto industry. First, Chrysler announcing 800 dealership closings, then General Motors announcing 1,100 dealership closings. Uh, all, all of this activity was ordered by the president's task force, his auto task force. And then it was up to the companies to decide which dealers were going to go away, even though these are independent business people with franchise agreements that they thought uh, could not be summarily dismissed like this. I don't know that there is a person in Metro Detroit who had a rougher week than the woman on the other end of our line this morning. She had three dealerships when last week began. Holiday Chevrolet in Farmington Hills, Century Dodge in Taylor, and Livonia Chrysler Jeep in Livonia. By the end of the week, she was told all three dealerships would have to close. And her family business was out of business. Her name, Colleen McDonald. She's on the other end of our line this morning here on the Frank Beckman Show. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Frank. How are you holding up now? It's It's been a few days. You've had a weekend to go over it, talk with the family, and kind of reflect on what's happened here. Uh, how do you feel? Well, I'm holding up pretty well. Um, it was a very difficult weekend, but I've got friends and family. I received many, many emails and phone calls from people that are concerned. My employees um, have been wonderful, as I said, um, some, do some interviews this weekend. I'm doing this for them and all the other employees that potentially will lose their jobs from all the dealerships closing. Um, what they're doing right now, Frank, is, is criminal. Um, what I want the, the the audience to understand is um, they're in bankruptcy, not us. You know, we're a viable business in the state of Michigan, in Detroit, and a lot of the dealers across um, the state of Michigan that were closed were viable businesses. We're talking top 100 um, in the country with Chrysler. Our stores alone sold for Chrysler sold over 11,000 products in the last four years. We are, there's no reason for them to shut us down. But I can't I can't understand that the, the state of Michigan could allow for viable business to close in this economic time. You know, I was listening to you earlier, and I, where is our governor? Well, we know where she is right now, possibly getting another job, which is fine, but let's not lose focus here. You are still the governor of the state of Michigan. You need to be here making sure that the job loss doesn't get even worse than it already is. It's going to be crazy. I can't believe that she's not that concerned about our people right now and, and is going across the country and not staying here and being here for us where she needs to be. What, what options do you have right now? What could the governor do for you? Well, I think the governor should be, should be talking for us and talking to the judge and saying what they're doing just shouldn't be done. I would, I would like to have everyone, and we have some rallies going on around the country. You know, we've filed, we filed a motion on, on a Saturday trying to get them to stop and they wouldn't reject these 789 dealers. So there's a lot of things that we can do. But right now what they're doing, I mean, they're, they're, she's quoted saying we, should, we are going to take haircuts and things like that. Well, a haircut's fine, but as, as you know, I was decapitated over the week, or last week. Um, and then I hear Jim Press saying, well, you know what? Um, we all have to be sac- take sacrifice and things like that. Well, what are, am I a lamb? I mean, this is crazy. What they're doing is they can't do this to us. Let free trade take its course. Let us, let us do what we've always done for 30 years. We've been here there 30 years this year in both locations. Let free market take its course and let dealers work it out amongst themselves. We do not cost the factory one dime. I did some research this weekend, and I, I realized that just in training alone, just training alone, we spent – Seventy-seven thousand dollars training our people that we had to pay Chrysler. This is from a guy, Jim Press, said that these dealers that they let go weren't able to afford to train their people. Not only did we afford to train our people, we're one of the most top profitable stores in the Detroit area, and that came from the business center last year. His, so, so I wish that they would stop saying that we are not viable businesses, that we're underachievers. We don't have underachiever employees in our locations, and neither do most of the other dealers that were affected. We have great employees, and I will tell you, we will continue running our stores. We will continue as used car operations. We will continue servicing body shops, and most of my employees are going to stick with us because they know that it's a good place to work, and I take care of my employees, and that's why I have good employees. It works both ways. 
Are, are you in the process of, of trying to gain a franchise agreement with another automaker now? I've talked to several dealers who were in the same boat as you, uh, who, who had their dealerships, got the notification they would uh, lose their franchises. And a number of them have put in applications with, with uh, foreign auto companies to, to try to land a, uh, a dealership here and keep their doors open. I haven't actually put in a per se application yet. I have made a few phone calls. Um, that's always, you know, something that I would look into doing. Um, but I haven't, I haven't heard anything yet. And uh, there's, un- unfortunately, as you know, the, market, the car business is a tough business right now. So I can't imagine too many people wanting to add more franchises um, in any area, let alone Detroit. So I would welcome that idea. I would love that idea. But um, I want to be practical as well. You know, I think right now, uh, you know, running the used car operations, which is, you know, a very good profit center, that that will be the, uh, my best choice right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you do hope to remain open though and remain a viable business during this time and and have you been given any hope by the lawyers you, you mentioned earlier you filed a motion I, that's a group of dealers I take it who have gotten together to to challenge these closings in bankruptcy court right right yeah the NADA and, yeah. okay and and uh, have they given you any hope that somehow you can get this this decision reversed. Well, there's very little hope. Um, unfortunately, I have been uh, through more bankruptcy attorney meetings than I've ever wanted to be in. And what I un- what I understand is what in bankruptcy, what these businesses do is they hide behind bankruptcy. They and that's what Chrysler is doing. They're hiding behind bankruptcy. Any state law, any state franchise law is is null and void. It doesn't matter. So they can do anything they want. What I understand is what they can do is they can suggest that they want to close these doors. And usually, the bankruptcy judge will go along with it. What the bankruptcy judge needs to understand, though, and I hope someone at one of his you know, team is listening, that this is just the wrong thing to do. We cannot afford to lose one more job across this country. This is, this is just a nightmare. And for people that don't think it's going to affect them, like all of these politicians down south that were you know, trying to bury us you know, months ago, it's going to affect them, too. And I think they're seeing that now. You know, Candace Miller was on earlier. You know, she hit the nail on the head. They're a little, they're a little concerned right now what's happening, and it's just going to get worse. It's not just my employees. You know, we have vendors and we have things like that. They're all just sick about it. But, you know, car dealers are entrepreneurs. That's why we are so successful in what we do. We're, we're business people. We, we know how to make a buck. We know how to keep good people. And most of the people that are out there, and I'm, I'm not just speaking for me. You know, I got hit the hardest, but I'm not speaking for me. I'm speaking for all of them. We will survive this, and we, we will be better people and stronger people from, from going through this. I, I, have, I know it is. I, I learned this business from the best person that could be, which is my father. He and, and a lot of the dealers say, I wish, my, I wish your dad was around right now because he would know what to do. And I'm, my husband and I, he, he's worked for the company for 30 years, and, and our business partner has worked with us for, for 30 years. And we always say, what would Walt do? What would Walt do right now? And we, we know the answer, and we're going to do what he would do, and we're going to survive to make sure these businesses go on forever and ever, mainly because of him. I mean, he, he built these businesses from nothing back in 79. We bought Holiday in 84. And Holiday has been a struggle. It's a real tough location, I'll, I'll be honest with you. But you know what? We can do this. We're, we're good people, and we have good people working for us. Uh, it, it sounds as if you're going to fight this. I mean, even though, from uh, on a personal level, I mean, losing all three of your businesses like this, Colleen, this is uh, this is devastate uh, just about everybody. And I, I I can't believe your determination to go on. I I I picture myself in your shoes, and and I could see myself wallowing in self pity right now and saying, "Man, I I just been wiped out." And, and let's put the house up for sale, and you know, f- find something else to do. We have to understand, um, we are conservative business people. We have no debt. Um, we have no debt at the dealerships. We're very well capitalized, and we can weather any storm out there. That was my dad's forte, cost control, cost control, cost control. All right. So we actually were trained for this day. Believe it or not, this day, my dad probably knew it was coming and said, you need to watch what you do every single day. And we live that way in our personal life as well. And my mom has, is, is, you know, has, has been here for us, and she'll be the, continue to be for, here for us. And, I mean, yeah, it was a tough weekend. And I, and I want to say, oh, you know, pity me and whatever have you. Don't, don't feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for the hundreds of employees across Detroit and across the country who just got the worst news of their life that their jobs are going to be eliminated. And as dealers, and I'm not the only dealer out there that's doing this, 
as dealers, I've talked to many dealers, they're going to continue on. They've got good employees. They've got wonderful customers. And that's what makes us strong. So it's not about Chrysler, the big thing. It's the communities that we're...